Linda, um, a medium, spiritual medium, many other things that you do. Before we talk about your NDE, just let the people know what you get up to during the day. <laughs> what do I get up to during the day? Because you do get well, up to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a single mum. I've got a 14-year-old, so I get her to school. Um, my interests, if you want, um, I love talking about what I do. I love researching what I do. I can't just sit and watch movies anymore. You know, I'm past that now. So I'm, I'm always on to documentaries. I like watching even alien um, docos and things because my brain is, now that um, I've finished my studies, my, my brain is still going. Right. You know, um, um, I've now got my PhD, yes. Um, so my brain is just in loan mode still. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in all the topics that I do as well as what and I love hearing other people's stories. Um, so that feels, you know, the day goes so fast and then I get my daughter home and it's like, oh, God, where did that go? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. How long was that six hours? It felt like 20 minutes, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, of course, you work fully in the world of uh, mediumship, um, you, you do courses and um, counselling and, and all of this is is part of your... Do you want my qualifications? Fire away. I've got my PhD. Yeah. yeah, good man. Huh. I've got my PhD in philosophy. I'm a certified life coach practitioner. I'm a certified CBT practitioner. I'm a spiritual counsellor. I'm also an ordained minister. Wonderful. Um, oh, my God. Right. So you can understand just there. Yeah. I I can just get onto Google and look at psychology, and then it's time to pick up my daughter at three o'clock. Sure. You know, so my day just is just I'm just churning. You know, distinguishing what's fact, what's fiction, writing it down. So when I do talk to people, it's based on evidence. Yeah. So it's not discredited. That's basically what I love doing. Perfect. Dis. Um, proving what I do. Yeah. That's basically my hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. It's great to have a job that's your hobby as well. <laughs> so, uh, Thank not, God I'm retired now. <laughs> not, not many people get that, that privilege. But um, yeah. we're going to be hearing a lot from you and all the stuff that, that you do. Um, but for today, I wonder if you could tell us about your near-death experience and mm -hmm. if indeed it actually set you on your path to doing what you're doing or it was just another experience. But if, give us some info okay. about that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, my near-death experience that I know about happened in 2001. But since then, I'm pretty sure I had some as a child as well, right. as like a baby mm -hmm. with my experiences. Right. Um, because I've always been a psychic medium. I've always known things, just that knowing. Yeah. But in 2001, I was living in North Carolina in America. I married an American, and we were doing immigration. You get a year from the time you get married, you get a year until you lodge immigration. Right. So I could then get permanent residency and get a green card to work. So, yeah, it was pretty stressful. Hmm. Um I got pretty damn sick with a flu. Um, he wouldn't take me to a doctor. Right. Um, so on the on the night of the 5th of May 2001, I was pretty damn sick in bed and I went to sleep. I woke up at about 2 o'clock in the morning of the 6th of May. Right. I actually did get to the toilet, but I know for a fact... I did not bang on the wall to right. wake him up. Right. I know I, I wasn't capable of. Mm. I was sitting there on the toilet mm. and I went to sleep. Right. Um, in my lifetime of our reality now, mm -hmm. I woke up nine days later after being in um, ICU for nine days. Right. Um, but what happened after um, I went to sleep, next thing I know is that I'm floating in this near the ceiling so I'm up um, my head's nearly on the roof um, in the lounge room wow I'm watching the paramedics come through they're all 
they're all having this little powwow in the lounge room right. and I'm just right. sitting there observing it all. So I'm hearing what they're saying, what they're writing on their clipboards. Mm -hmm. I saw their name badges. Um, my body was still in the ensuite in right. the toilet. Right. Um, so I saw them wheel me out. Um, I wasn't scared. I wasn't... Um, there was no fear mm -hmm. at all. You know, I was just happy to watch. I was, yeah. I was at peace. Yeah. It was really peaceful. Um, so, you know, a lot of people do talk about when they're floating yep. in the room. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing that for, oh gosh, about half an hour, you know, because of the events that were unfolding in front of me until they actually wheeled me out. Um, then after they all left, um, my husband also left to go to the hospital as well. Um, the door shut and he turned off all the lights. Right. So I'm still there floating. Mm -hmm. And then the front door opens just in front of me and these things come through the door. Wow. Um, I can't call them orbs because, you know, we call orbs like those white mm -hmm. energy balls. Yeah. These things weren't white. They were dark blue. Um, just trying to find something around my house. No, nope, nothing here blue. I wear really red, as you can tell. <laughs> um, but they were very dark blue. Right. But they were see-through. And in the middle of them, there was like a white energy. Right. Um, pure, pure bright, but it didn't hurt my eyes. Um, and they came in like doing this type of thing, but there was about 15 of them. Right. And they came around me. They were hovering around me. Some of them were about, oh, about this big. Mm -hmm. Some of them were about this big. Um, I could see through them. Right. Um, they, they were they were doing like this, um, you know, like sparklers yeah. that you buy and you light the end and it does yeah. this sparkle yeah. thing. But they didn't have those end things no, that they get on a sparkler. They were yeah. just like this. Yeah. So they hovered around me for, oh, gosh, about five minutes. No communication at all. But I think they were communicating with each other. Right. Um, then they all just floated out of the door and the door shut again. Were they, um, now, sorry, were, were they uh, very similar to... Uh, in the movie Ghost, when they took Patrick Swayze character away, was it that type of thing? I'd say yes. Right. But they were intelligent. Yeah. These ones, because the way that they were hovering and moving, like maneuvering around each other, they knew there was a yeah. consciousness. Yeah. There was communication between them. Right. So they weren't just all going in like one line. They were all like moving around me at different times and I'm like, well, what it but I wasn't scared of them. No. You know? Um, I don't know what the hell they were, but hello if you know if you were on Mars trying to explain what a tree is to a Martian yeah. and then you've got your you know, you've got your palm trees, your birch trees, yeah. your willow trees. Yeah. How you know you can't explain it, sure. you know? Um, so the next thing I know is I call it the frog frog stage. Right. Um, if you close your eyes, that's what it was. It was just like I closed my eyes. Right. And then when I opened my eyes again, I'm in heaven. Wow. I went, Wonderful. but my body didn't physically move, but I was like transported or teleported. Um, you know, it's just like you blink and when you open your eyes, you're standing on the top of one of the pyramids in Giza. It was that sort of... Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, there was no motion involved with the transport. Um... I stayed up there for probably about five years. I did my life review. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, that was fun. Was it Was it um, pure intention that you went from place to place? Was you conscious of, of intention? No, I had no, I had no knowledge at all where I was going next. Okay. Um, so, like, when I went to sleep on the toilet, I didn't think, oh, maybe I should float in the room now. Right. It was just there, yeah. okay? Um, so when I woke up, I'm, I'm sorry, when I, like, I'm floating in the ceiling, near the ceiling, then I'm in heaven, um, and this lady came up to me, who I'm pretty sure is this woman who stands to my left, which is a totally different story, by the way. Um <laughs> We should just do an episode on her because I've actually driven, um, drawn some pictures of her because I've got, um, she, she, she's the one who talks to me every day. Right. Um, 
So she said, oh, no, you, you're not, you, got, you can come back here, but you've got to go over there first. So it was like a blink where you close your eyes, and then when I opened my eyes again, I'm in this, I wouldn't say it's a cathedral, but um, I try and explain it. If you can imagine a plank of wood, like when they cut trees now, you know how you get a yeah. plank of wood about this long yeah. and it might be 10 foot long? Yeah. Imagine a plank that this width yeah. is as wide as a room. Right. The length would be 300 feet long. Wow. So the trees to make these planks would have been a thousand foot tall. Right. You know, we can't have them at here because we chop down trees every 20 odd years or whatever. Um, but then the wood is melted into sandstones, quartzes as well. Right. So um, if you know the word melding, where they like melt it together, yep, yep. so there's no glue or nails. Um, yeah, so I'm in this room just, and I'm admiring all this magnificent tree, like planks of wood with all these, like we're talking sandstones, um, you know, it's not a tile like this big. But, you know, they're as big as this room that I'm in now, my <laughs> dining room. Um, so then I look up and there's these three in front of me. Um, you know, in the Bible they say, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, th the three. Yeah. So I call them the three. Yeah. One was would have been about 15 feet tall. Wow. The other two on his left and right, mm -hmm. well, I call them him, but I don't know what, what sex they were, if they had a sex. But there was two that were about 12 foot tall. You could make out the head, but there was no features. It was just pure energy <laughs> rotating. Right. Um, I could make shoulders out, and so it sort of went around the head. You could see shoulders, yep. and then it came down. And it was all like vortex in energy. So I'm looking at these three thinking, oh my gosh, who are these? Am I in trouble? <laughs> you know, I actually, I actually felt to myself, am I in trouble? Am I going back to the principal's office? You know? <laughs> and then they didn't, because I didn't have fingers to point, but I, I was made aware of this big box in front of them. Right. Um... um I call it the Ark of the Covenant. Right. If you can imagine the Ark of the Covenant, yeah. like magnificence, you know, with yeah. all the carvings and everything. Yeah. So I look into this box and inside there's no walls or floor. It's eternal. Once you look into it, right. it's eternal. There's no walls or um, capacity within a space inside right. it. Inside, though, there was all these um, like bubbles about this big. Right. And each one of them had like a little TV screen with a memory of everything I'd ever done. So, you know, wow. when I died, I was about 35. So if you can imagine every second of your life having one of these bubbles, so you can imagine the oh. infinite amount of bubbles in there, yeah. you know? Yeah. They say the young, um, the, the young, the yeah, good die young for a reason because you don't have so many bubbles in there. <laughs> so I picked one of these up. And it was a memory of me being in my grandmother's front yard when I would have been about three. And she, my grandmother had a white cat that I used to pull its tail, this big Persian white fluffy cat. And I used to sit there. Like, I sort of remember it now because I saw it in this box of memories. Um, so I've got this memory where I'm pulling the cat's tail and instantly I'm filled with the pain the cat felt. Wow. Now, this is where we get deep. Right. This is where it's very serious. Yeah. Because it wasn't so much about my emotional um, joy or sadness of the event that I created. I was now feeling the emotions that I'd caused in mm. the cat. Right. So all of a sudden my butt started to really hurt because that's where the tail would come out. Right. Right. <laughs> I got the, uh, the icky feeling that you'd get like, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. But it's tenfold. It's tenfold. So the pain was chronic 
And I thought, oh my God, did I do that to that cat? Mm. I didn't know, you know, a three-year-old, I didn't know I was hurting this cat so much, you know? Yeah. So I put that bubble back in after I thought of, you know, um, the, the thought process that went through my head was, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm really sorry. Right. You know, um, this was just my natural reaction to feeling this pain from this cat. So then I put that down, and then I look inside the bubble, this big box of bubbles, and I pull out this other one of when I'm being kind to somebody. Right. And I didn't feel how I felt. I felt how that person felt with me being kind to him. But it was tenfold. Now, this is the Bible here talking. Right. The tenfold effect of our emotions. Right. So all of a sudden, I'm filled with this absolute overwhelming joy and compassion yeah. of having someone just be kind to them, you know? So I put the bubble back in there and I thought, I, I was nearly crying. You wow. know, I'm looking at these big three like energy entities in front of me and there's no words said at all but i think the only reason why i was there looking at my bubbles because that's what i call them my bubbles of bubbles. Um, memory was to fathom what it was this life review where we have to judge every bubble right. say sorry for what we've done or be gracious for the good that we've done right by the grace of God. See how we go back to biblical terms here. Yeah. The grace of God is tenfold. If we're kind to another person, when we go home and do that life review, we feel that tenfold, but it's from their perspective. Right. Um, so the kinder we are to other people, the more loving we are, right. um, the more generous we are. Now, generous is not just money. Generous can be just time. With the soul. You know, oh, yeah. instead of just talking to somebody, it's from the soul. Yeah. You know, generosity comes from the soul. So they wanted me to learn what this process was. It's the perspective of what our actions create. Yeah. It's that reaction. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it wasn't just there. Now, this is where we go even deeper with this that I do explain to people. Because a lot of people do ask about life review. Yeah. Um, Let's just say Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Okay, imagine my pen is Adolf Hitler. Yeah. He killed, what, 40 million Jews during World War II? But I don't know Adolf Hitler personally. Right. Um, so when he does his life review, because it's all about emotional correctiveness. Right, yeah. Correcting our emotional mm. um, mistakes, if you want to know, you know, if you want to call it that. So... Someone like Adolf Hitler back in the 1940s and 30s, here I am now sitting in 2020, and because I get sad thinking about things that happened at Auschwitz, yeah. um, you know, even thinking about poor um, Anne Frank mm. with her situation that the Jews created in Berlin, etc., mm. um, because I've now got an upset about it, I'm now one of his bubbles. Right. Oh. And he's got to pull out my emotional <laughs> sadness <laughs> and forgive himself for creating that within me. Right. So some people's bubble boxes, mm -hmm. boxes of bubbles, it can go on for eternity because someone like even Cleopatra from 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. I say the word Cleopatra, I'm instantly getting an emotional attachment to her. Right. So now here's another bubble that she has to contend with when she does her life review, whether I'm upset or happy that she lived and whatever happened to her. Right. So the more energy that we put into something, the more of these bubbles that we create when right. we do our life review. Right. Um, karma is one of the words I like using because karma comes back right. tenfold. Yeah. Okay? So when I'm doing this, looking into this big box, now you've got to, 
Now, people have said to me, how long did I spend at this box for? I reckon I was there for about six months because I was just, oh, my God, look at me doing that. Oh, my God, look at me doing that. There I am there. So I'm filled with all these, like a 35-year-old woman yeah. remembering things that I did when I was 2, 12, 22, etc. You know, we can't yeah. remember every single thing we do every single day of our lives, but it's all inside this box. So now, because I've been there and I've seen it, I can still, um, you know, just recall, oh, yeah, now I remember <laughs> being in my front, front yard of my grandmother's place when I was three right. because I saw myself there. So that's an awesome part of it um, that I get to now speak about it because I came back. Um, but at the ult ultimate end of it, it's a very serious topic. Right. What happens in our life with you? You know, I can't even stand on ants anymore right, because yeah. I know now they're sitting there, a little ant, and they say, oh, my God, look at this foot coming down. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's being squished. I know I've got to feel that tenfold yeah. when I go home. Yeah. So I can't kill bugs, no. cockroaches. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Yeah. You know, it, it works. I can't even be bad to furniture. I have this. Because um, furniture ultimately is a living I, I, I have this debate with people, um, you know, uh, where some of the uh, the bugs and the flies, they end up in the pool that we have and they struggle to survive. And I always pull them out because, you know, I know some of them only live 24 hours, but it's their 24 yeah. hours, right? And, That's right. And if I can, yes. if I can help prevent uh, or help that life form which has done no harm to me and just because I'm too damn lazy to get off my butt and to fish it out of the pool um I can't I can't do that I really can't do that um and and so um yes um I I guess the good news is that there's a lot of reviewing to do so we won't be coming back in in the short <laughs> the short term what? Okay, so now it goes to our life contracts. Right. Because a lot of people ask me about the life contract. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm coming back next time. I'm going to be a millionaire. Stop this poor business. Right. You know, it doesn't work like that. No. Because our life contract, again, is our soul. Right. And our emotional, um, our emotional makeup of our consciousness. Yeah. So the life lessons... They consist of things like forgiveness, understanding, compassion, love, <laughs> kindness, uh, compassion. Um, so let's just pick one of those. I don't know. I'll let you pick one of those. Right. Pick a, pick a um, value that we can have. Uh, let's pick one. Uh, let's say uh, our life contract. Yeah, okay. So with our life contract, we might say, okay, in my next life, I'm going to be more forgiving. Okay? Right. So, yeah, what happens now is we are not put into a position where we have to forgive others. Right. It's sometimes the reverse, yeah. where others have to forgive us. Mm. So, if you ask, okay, I'm going to have a life contract where I'm a loving person, Right. You might be a loving person, but you're conceited and selfish. Mm. How much can you love yourself? How much um, do you value other people so then they love you? Right. So even when we say just life contracts, um, there's so much depth to how it can be given. Right. You know, um, I like going back to the movies. Yeah. Um, the one Evan Almighty. Um, what was his name? Carol was his surname, the actor, I, Evan Almighty. Uh, Sorry? I never saw that movie, I don't think, so... Yeah. yeah. Well, his, his wife ends up leaving him because he turns into Moses and he's building an ark. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he starts taking on the persona of Moses. He gets right. the beard and he's, he's always in the robes. Yeah. So she leaves. She can't handle it because he's a politician. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going to be in a suit going to Congress every day, and here he is dressed as Moses, building an ark. Yeah. So she's sitting in a diner, and Morgan Freeman plays God, and he comes to her and he says, don't you understand that if someone asks for patience, 
Right. We won't give him patience. We give him opportunities right. to be patient. Right. So <laughs> that is an awesome right. Yeah. So I love that movie, Bevan, um, Evan Almighty, right. because, um, you know, our life contract isn't about, oh, my God, I want to come back as a rich person next time. No. Money is nothing, no. you know. Money is totally nothing. You know, that's just a, what I call a societal dictatorship um, created by greedy, selfish people to make people slaves yeah. to the society. Yeah. You know, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Because... Out in the real world, you know, the real world, not this world, but in the real the world, world, the universal world, yeah. there's no money. No. It's how we treat each other. Yeah. You know, how much love do you give to others? Mm -hmm. And then it's tenfold when yeah. we go to heaven. Yeah. And you're recognized you know? by your light, presumably. Is that correct? I don't know, Doug. Um, when I was, when I was, um, I was standing in this field and just watching for like two years. I reckon I was there. Um, everyone's just so happy, <laughs> yeah. you know. But we don't doubt, you know. I had no doubts at all to question right. why are they so happy? You know, <laughs> this is so yeah. unusual. Yeah. It didn't even enter my head because I was already part of it. Right. Um, you know, but you're just so... Con some of the words that come to my mind is contentment. Right. Contentment. Yeah. It's pure contentment. You don't ask questions. You don't judge. You don't assume. You don't expect anything. Right. You're just so content to be there. Right. Um, another word that comes to mind is peace. What does peace mean ultimately? Mm -hmm. It's just that contentment yeah. of knowing that everything's going to be okay. So you've got your security. Yeah. There's no dramas that are going to present themselves to you. Um, and you're safe. Yeah. Ultimately, you're safe. Yeah. Um, so I was there in the field for probably two years. No one really spoke to me much. Right. Because they knew I wasn't staying. Right. You know, they knew I was staying there. Because you've got to remember, they're staying there for like eternity. Yeah. I'm just there for like <laughs> much. So they, you know, in the blink, I was gone again. Um, but some of the things that I observed was the animals there. Oh my God, we're talking bears that are like twenty feet long. Right. You know, not like now our bears are just so tiny. We're talking lions and um, dinosaurs. You know, the funniest thing was I saw this dinosaur. <laughs> now I don't know what type of dinosaur it was. But I, I reckon I watched this dinosaur walking around for about, oh, oh, probably a couple of hours. And he's walking. And when the, like, he's here and people are here, right. the size comparison. Yeah. This is a human. Yeah. Well, not human, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Human is <laughs> This thing's like here. But when he walks, he was walking over them so he doesn't squash them. Right. Beautiful. And you know, it's it's that it's that coexistence yeah. of unity, you know. Yeah. I, I looked down, and when I was standing in this field, there was all these flowers. Now, this is one thing I do like talking about the flowers, right? Because the flower was growing like this. I'll come in even closer. So it's got it's like little petals at the top. Right. But as your foot comes down, it moves, so you don't stand on it. <laughs> So the flowers had consciousness. Yes. So, you know, if you're going to step on a flower, yeah. it moves. Well, its roots stay, but it moves around so you don't squash it. Right. And you, you're you one with it. That's that's the oneness, that everything is one and one is all. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I say a couple of things. Um, I could hear the flowers. I could smell the mountains. Wow. And I could taste the music. Now, the music there, I've tried... I, when I close my eyes at night and concentrate, I can still hear the music. But we are so limited here with our string instruments, our percussion yeah. instruments, yeah. our um, wind instruments, vocals. It wasn't anything like what we've got here on Earth. Right. But it was like a repetitious chant. Yeah. It was like... A, it was sort of like, oh, 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 o
That's not harp. And no. you know, string instruments. It's not a. It's not a drum like Native American Indians. You know, it wasn't like yeah. a. Whoa, 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 no. whoa. It was actually like uh, some of the sounds you hear from the universe, which we get back from Hubble. Well, they say, they say, yeah, sorry, yes, because I was just thinking the sound of angels then. Right. But, you know, in space there are noises, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, that they've detected, yes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I can still hear the music, I just can't make the instrument that would play it unfortunately because we just don't have it here no, you know like the colors exist. yeah yeah you know um i've got a pen and paper here i will just draw it you know people don't understand this you know our color spectrum yeah if that's all the colors yeah i don't know if you can see my yeah yeah you know we are in a pie chart we see about this much color yeah that's all our blues yellows reds yeah greens blacks etc yeah all this when we go home i can't tell you what those colors look like no you know? yeah i really can't tell you what those colors are because we don't have them here right. oh it's sort of like red it's not like it's nothing like red no, no. <laughs> it's nothing like blue or green or orange or yellow you know <laughs> you know so that's if i've got one frustration about dying it's the lack of information that i can give to people about what's there Right. Because I can't tell what the colours are. I can't tell what the music's mm. like. Mm. I can't um, tell you what these huge beans were when I was yeah. doing my life review. Yeah. Um, because I've got nothing here to compare it to. Right. Uh, but yeah. did, did you did you meet family members at all in the period you was over there? Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And did you want to meet them? <laughs> 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 you know, it is funny. I'm going to tangent here. A lady came to me for a reading and she said, I want to know when we die, do I have to see my ex-husband because he was an asshole and I really, really don't want to see him again. <laughs> so I sat there for about half an hour trying to explain to this woman that when we go there, there's no emotions, there's no hate, there's no yeah. bitterment anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We don't hold on to regrets and stuff. Yeah. So everyone just loves each other. So when you go home, you're going to love him again. Yeah. She got up and walked out. <laughs> Okay, I will go there. I'm in this room. Um, no walls, no floor, no ceiling. It's just white. Right. Um, so I'm standing in this white space because there's no walls or floor or ceiling. And I saw her over in the distance. She was about this big. And as she walked towards me, because there was no floor, right. as she walked towards me, she was getting bigger. Um... She told me she was my great, 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 great grandmother. Her okay. name was Karina. Okay. Um, I sat there. Oh, she was really angry with me. Why are you here for? <laughs> oh, oh. Am I back at the principal's office again? <laughs> um, so she was pretty upset. Um, she said, they, they didn't tell me that you were going to be coming here. And I said, well, where am I now? Um, so we had this conversation, oh my gosh, I was there for so long with her, you know, I, I honestly don't know. Right. Yeah, you know, but by our conversation, you know, you can tell that we've been talking now for an X amount of minutes because of the things that we say. Right. Her is months, years that I was with her for. Um, she told me that I was going to work with the police for 10 years. I did. Wow. Two months short of 10 years. Right. She told me that I was going to be a first aid trainer for two years. I was for one week short of two years. She told me that um, I had to, oh, I will go there. When I died, it was May 2001. She told me explicitly many hundreds of times, because I was there for so long, I had to get out of America right. before August. Okay. I had to leave America before August, 9-11. Um, what happened, you know, a lot of people that don't live in America, they don't know this stuff, but if I'd stayed in America after I woke up, um, they rounded up all the illegal immigrants. Right. And they were all deported. 
Right. So if I'd been deported, I would never have gotten my job with the police or been a first aid trainer, you know, so then I would never have met Tashi's dad and had her. Right. Um, this is a mind blow because I've just touched something that I really do want to tell people about. 2001, they told this lady, Karina, my great 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 grandmother, she told me the date to conceive my daughter in 2005. Wow. Yeah. It's a mind blow. So I always remembered that date. I was 40, I was 39. Um, her dad and I weren't really getting on that well. Right. So that's what I did. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remembered the date and I thought, right, we have to today because it's, um, they told me. Um, <coughs> you know, Tashi, you know, I was 40. She's a special kid. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, but there's a reason why I've got her. You know, she's she's starting to show signs of doing this as well, which is sure. awesome. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Giving me that sort of information. Oh, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, it's like Sarah Connor out of the Terminator movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to have this son and he's going to save the world, you know. You're telling me things I haven't even done yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that was in the, in the beginning of the Terminator. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's sort of how I felt after all this. So when I did come back to America in June, because um, I woke up in May, right. um, April, May, actually it was the end of June that I came back to Australia. Um, funny thing, my mum, who swears on a life that she's not a psychic, <coughs> she did the um, family tree. So when I landed, I went around to see her, and she said, oh, look what's just arrived. The family tree. Right. And I said, oh, really? Let's have a look and see five generations ago. Right. Now, when I saw Karina when, she, when I was up at home, she was she kept telling me she was 36. Right. Guess how old she was when she died? Because there she was in our family tree. She's 36 years old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so people say to me, have you got a confirmation that this stuff's real? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Because she, you know, I, I never did the family tree. I wouldn't know, you know, I was lucky to know my parents' parents, yeah. you know. Yeah. Let alone the generations Going back, back further, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but she, you know, she told me so much stuff. Um, you know, she showed me the tunnel for reincarnation. Um, she kept saying, don't go in there. If you go in there, you can never come back, you know. <laughs> so she had a bit of a sense of humour too with right, that. Right. Um, but I I know this tunnel that we can go into. It rotates this one way as well as counterclockwise as well as clockwise. Right, yeah. So it's like a... Yeah. I can't even... Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I can so, do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you can imagine a tunnel where the sides of one side are going down yeah. end up at the same time. Yeah. And one thing about it, it was... Um, the word I explain it as was attractive. You know, you say to yourself, why does a moth go towards a light? Yeah. Because it's attracted to it, yeah. like a magnet. Yeah. You know, it's like that magnetic pull. Yeah. I was standing in front of this tunnel. <clears throat> so if the tunnel's here and I'm standing in here, oh, man, I did I want to go into that tunnel? <laughs> it was like a pull. Like, I'm going, whoa, I really want to go into that tunnel. Yeah. And she kept pulling me back, saying, no, 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 don't don't go in there. Because if you go in there, you can never go back to your own body. Right. Um, you've got to go back, you know, you've got all this stuff you're going to do. Um, so, and, But I, I remember looking down this tunnel. Um, if I had to do it like a distance, because you've got to remember there's no space and no time up there, which right. is a pain in the butt to try and put it into our right. references here. I would say it would be about, probably about 50 metres, 150 feet. And at the end of it was pure white. It was white at the end of the tunnel. Um, so you walk through like this black vortexing, going up and down at the same times together. And then you go into like this white thing at the end of it. Right. But I didn't go down there because I wouldn't be sitting here today if I did. Um <laughs> Yeah, she was pretty adamant. Yeah, she kept saying, don't you go in there. <laughs> Talk 
to be like a normal grandparent, yeah. but she's my great great grandparent. Don't you go in there? You're not allowed to go in there. <laughs> Why do they want you to see this for? And then I said to her, "But who are they?" Yeah. And she said, "They. They don't want you to go in there." <laughs> right. yeah. Super. super. Uh, so, yeah. 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 So it was very very interesting. Um, you know, I don't mind talking about it. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't like talking about how I died. No. Because um, it was too scary. You know, you go to the toilet, you close your eyes, you go to sleep, and you just yeah. don't wake up. And and also, so, and also very indignant as well to to die on the toilet. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but you got something. In but common. I wasn't there to know about it anyway. <laughs> you you got something in common with the greatest showman ever, Elvis Presley. So that can't be a bad thing either. For That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so we're, you know, it's it's good to laugh a little bit about our experiences if we can. Um, and yes, of no, course. nobody likes the process of dying, but I feel that you are quite happy about uh, the afterlife and life continues. But uh, even for people like ourselves, <clears throat> we want it to be quick. We don't like the idea oh, of going to sleep again. You know, that was just so nice. You just there, yeah. you know, there was no pain. You know, I don't want the pain side of it at all, right. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, that's that sort of scares me, you know. Um, yeah, so I don't like talking about that. Right. But after the, after the fact that I died, I'll talk about that forever, right. you know. Okay. Um, funny thing, though, was when I woke up, I was in ICU. Oh, my God. The first thing I saw when they woke up was them pulling that blue tube out of my throat. Oh, my God. I'll never forget that because I'm so short-sighted. So this blue tube coming out of my throat was so clear. Right. It was sort of right. like this color, the color off the top of my lid here. Right. Um, yeah, that blue long tube that they stick in your throat into your lungs. Um, this nurse was there talking to me. And I looked at her and I said, how's Motley? <laughs> She looked at me and said, what? I said, oh, come on, you know Motley. And she's like looking at me. Yeah. Now, this is about five hours after I woke up from right. this event. And she said, tell me what you know about Motley. Just excuse me while I just wipe my eye. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I said, come on, you've got this grey and white cat. It's like a Persian. Yeah. He's 14 years old. He's got kidney trouble. You don't know whether to get him pills. You don't know whether to put him down. You don't know whether to get a new kitten now to be friends with Motley before you put Motley down. You've been telling me all week about your cat, Motley. She just looks at me and she <laughs> says, Linda, I've been working down on the second floor all week. We haven't met before, but I will tell you something. I do have a cat. His name is Motley, and everything you just said was the truth. Wow. Yeah. She never came back and saw me again. <laughs> <laughs> you have that effect on people. She couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, she couldn't handle it. Um, you know, I remember, like, they put me into, like, this one room. Um, where my bed was here, there was a TV against the wall, and I had a window here and a chair in the corner, and then next to the door was, like, my own personal ensuite oh. toilet. And um, I woke up, this would have been the second day after I woke up, I woke up in the chair in the corner, is my lady, she's got a man probably about 50 standing behind her, there was a child sitting at her feet with this big, like a sandy coloured um, Labrador dog. Right. So I'm just watching these three people with the dog looking at each other, they were talking, blah, blah, blah. And this nurse walks in and she said to me, how do you feel? And I said, oh, it's really good. I'm just watching these four. And she's like looking in the corner, yeah. looking at me, looking in the yeah. corner, looking at me. Yeah. She said, Linda, there's no one there. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, I just yelled it out like she's standing there and they're all over here yeah. in the corner. Yeah. And I said, guys, if you want her to know you're here, can you bang on the window? I'm going to tell her that. Straight away, the guy, like this. The whole, you know when you hit glass, it shivers? 
<laughs> this woman ran out of the room. <laughs> she never came back over. <laughs> Never saw her again. Oh, I freaked the hell out of Well, dear. <laughs> well, well I'll t- tell you what. Um, it's uh, funny. Linda, I could talk for, for hours for you with you, and we got to do this again at, at some point. <laughs> um, but I want to finish it on that very high note. <laughs> but before we go, uh, your website yeah. is lindaray.info you've got a Facebook page where can yes. they find you on, on Facebook on Facebook I've got a group it's called Dr. Linda Kramer Paranormal Right. so it's D-I yeah. L-Y-N-D-A because right. why did my mum put the Y in my name Kramer is with a C right. so it's C-R-A-M-E-R yeah. Paranormal Right. Okay. Dr. Linda Kramer Paranormal 